So good morning to everyone. My name is Riccardo Rossi. I am an associate professor at the UPC and a full research professor at SIMNE. Uh, I am the leader of the Kratos Multiphysics Group at SIMNE, and this is the reason for which today I am presenting our interface. I'd like to acknowledge before I start that even though it is me today to do the presentation, it was not me, the one doing the implementations, and I would like to acknowledge that it was uh, Mr. Javier Garate that solved many of the technical issues that we were facing over the last years. Um, nothing. Uh, my goal for today is not just to speak about what we did or what we wanted to achieve, but rather to tell what were our objectives and what were, were the challenges on, on the direction of fulfilling, fulfilling what we wanted. So um, to do so, I will try to um, to explain it by showing directly on interface. Our problem is that the Kratos, which is uh, my program, the program I work with a team of other people, it's an open source problem and pro program and it is, um, it is a general purpose solver. Being a general purpose solver implies that we have a lot of different physics, in particular thermal, structural, fluid, but also more complicated problems as FSI, we have technologies like DM or like MPM. Our decision in organizing the interface is to um, divide those things as much as possible, organizing things by physics, and then by having the possibility of combining different things into for the construction of more complicated problems. For example, this means that we define an interface for structures and for fluids, and then we define something that works on the basis of those two and allows to deal uh, with fluid structure interaction problems. Now, if we want to focus on the specific case of structures, we have the problem that a lot of different options became available as one attempts to um, to solve a problem that becomes increasingly complicated. For example, if you want to have um, to have a problem, then it may be static and linear, or static and linear, or it could be dynamic. Maybe it could involve eigenvalues. We have a different options. Any combination of those options will imply that a different subset of capabilities become available to the user, and a different subset of uh, options need to be required. For example, if we go and we take a look to the element technologies that are available in the case of static nonlinear structures, then we have a number of different elements that, that are available that allow to do this within Kratos. And for every of those, then we'll have to choose a constitutive node that fulfills the, um, well, the kind of of material behavior that we want to, to simulate. In particular, for example, if we now choose a linear elastic constitutive law, which represents isotropic 3D elasticity, we recall that we are in 3D, then in this case, we will need to prescribe just three parameters, density and modulus and Poisson ratio. However, if we go for a, for example, for a J2 plastic load, then the number of parameters that need to be prescribed become larger, as we need to prescribe the three parameters as before for the linear range, but also we need, well, for the elastic range, but we also need to prescribe a number of uh, new parameters that tell us how the uh, constitutive law evolves within the nonlinear regime. Now, this is a problem from the point of view of um, of the implementation of an interface. Of course, if all of those capabilities were available starting on day one, then one could build top-down this sort of tree, meaning that you decide what elements you want to make visible to the user, and then you tell for every of those elements what are the options that would be, that would be viable. Unfortunately, this is not possible in general, since our, our program is evolving dynamically, it has contribution of a lot of different people. And these different people, most typically, they do not have any experience in, with GAD. This would imply that maintaining our interface, um, our interface um, uh, 
in sync with the code that would become impossible. In order to do this, or to at least make an attempt to fulfill this, what we did is that we organized uh, our list of options as a database rather than simply as a tree. This implies in particular that for every element, we prescribe a number of different properties as the element, but also as the information about the, the domain we want, so the domain we work on, the dimension, if you're in 2D, in 3D, or maybe in axisymmetry, the strain size, the fact if we have different, uh, if the formulation is just irreducible, but if it has uh, different combination of variables, and the fact if it is in large deformation or not. This information allows us to tell not what is the fixed list of constitutive laws that are compatible with this, but rather what are the properties that a constitutive law need to fulfill in order to, um, to be compatible with the sort of elements. This implies in the practice that similar to this XML that we have for the elements, we will have another XML defined in which we add consecutive laws. For every consecutive law, we will have to tell, apart for its name and the list of parameters needed, we will have to tell what are the properties that identify this. For example, if it works, the strain size, and for example, the dimension, this sort of things. And on the basis of a matching between those two lists, the thing will be, will be dynamically showed in the in the interface. This means in the practice that if I now add here another, another constitutive law, as long as I fulfill, I completely, I complete the list of requirements that are needed, then the problem type will dynamically include it within this database, this, sorry, within this, um, this frame so that I can, so that we can add new consecutive laws and those new consecutive laws would be added where they should, so only with the elements they can work on together with the list of parameters that, uh, that needs to be fulfilled, that needs to be filled in order to allow their use. Well, and the only thing I want to say before finishing my time is that this list of properties or this capability of adding different lists and to combine, to filter, and to merge these different lists in a, I would say, smart way as being a very important feature for us in order to maintain this problem type. Since it allowed us or it allowed to some of our customers, well, customers, to some of our developers, which are in the great majority of PhD students, we have the possibility of adding new capabilities to the interface without having to understand all the internals of the GID. Well, nothing. I just want to say that for us, this was a really killer feature, and I wanted to thank the team for making it available to us. Thank you. Bye-bye.